This video will discuss the types of galaxies and just a little bit at the end on distances to galaxies. So um, as we investigate the, the universe, we take photographs. We, uh, you know, it's really tough with visual observations to uh, do much details of the galaxies because there's little light. Um, but with photographs, we can clearly identify four types of galaxies. And there are more, but these are the four major types I will discuss. So there are regular spiral galaxies with uh, defined spiral arms with the O and the B stars and the H2 regions as being tracers and where we uh, find a bigger concentration of cold uh, hydrogen, neutral hydrogen atoms with the 21 centimeter radiation. Uh, the spiral galaxies, you know, they contain the dust, the, the makings for stars, so there is uh, a good deal of star formation still taking place in the spiral arms of the spiral galaxies. There's another type of spiral, the barred spiral, that has a more rectangular shape uh, that goes through the nucleus, through the center of the galaxy, and then spiral arms uh, generally coming off from the ends of that rectangular structure. Um, for both the spirals and the barred spirals, we can further classify how uh, large the nucleus is compared to the body of the galaxy. If it's a, uh, an A type uh, spiral, then the arms are fairly small. Most of the materials in the nucleus of the galaxy are in the bar. Uh, so A classification, spiral arms are very close to the nucleus, wound in tight, and a small amount of material. The C, and there's a B in between, but the C type would be very wide, spread out spiral arms, very large diameter for the spiral structure compared to the size of the nucleus. So regular spirals with more of a, a ellipt elliptical shaped uh, nucleus and a barred spiral with a rectangular shaped uh, bar that runs through the nucleus. A, very tight, small arms, the C type, a spiral or bad spiral, we have very uh, large extent to the spiral arms are spread out very large. Another major type is the elliptical type of galaxy and later we'll see examples of giant ellipticals and dwarf ellipticals but uh, just for right now the elliptical type galaxy they're distinguished from the spirals because they lack gas and dust they lack the means to continue their star formation. So they have very much fewer young stars in the elliptical galaxy. And overall, there is kind of a color distinction. Uh, the spirals, they, they have more of the O and the B. They tend a little bit to have more blue light. And the ellipticals uh, tend towards yellowish uh, uh, type color, overall color. Uh, but they lack gas and dust. They have young stars. They don't have as much rotation. Uh, organized rotation as the uh, the spirals. We can classify the ellipticals based on their shape. If it's an E0, then we're pretty much looking at a spherical collection of stars. And if it's an E7, very elliptical. There's uh, room for confusion here because our viewpoint of the galaxy uh, may cause a, an E3 uh, elliptical galaxy to appear as an E0. If we're looking along uh, the long axis of the galaxy, imagine holding a football, and if you're look, viewing the side of the football, you can see more of the elliptical nature of the uh, football. But if you're looking at the end of the football, the cross-section view that we have will look more spherical. Um, then the irregular galaxies, uh, irregular, they don't have a real class to them. They don't have a lot of organization, so they're just kind of... a uh, turbulent uh, almost look to them. And here again we do have gas and dust and we have new stars being formed in the irregulars. So Hubble came up with a classification scheme of uh, called the tuning fork uh, classification scheme where he put them kind of a sequence and you can see some examples here, some photographs of E0 through E7. Um, and then the spirals, the SA with the small spiral arms the SC with the wider uh, spiral arms, and the SB for barred. Here's the bar going through the nucleus. Again, the A, the uh, spiral arms are close to the nucleus. The Bs, the nucleus is smaller in comparison to the arms. And the C, the nucleus is smallest of all, and we get the most spread out. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, you'd have to do this for 
several weeks to really get good at these classification. There's a little bit of room for uh, ambiguity. But uh, you should know this, my students should know this general pattern. Ellipticals E0 through E7, the spirals SA, SB, SC for the normal spirals, more of a, uh, a spherical nucleus. And then the SBs, SB, SBA, SBB, SBC for the barred spirals. There's been an enhancement to this tuning fork diagram with the Spitzer telescope infrared information. And I'm not going to go into this uh, in much detail, but you can see some examples of irregulars on this particular chart. Um, the one thing that uh, there has been some debate about is, is this sort of a, uh, a path of how galaxies change? And most people think, no, this is not, uh, we don't start as a elliptical and then become a spiral galaxy. Uh, and these arms don't uh, stretch out over time, uh, but more on that later. Okay, some uh, photographs of uh, elliptical galaxies here. And anytime you see this kind of stair-step uh, shape, you know this came from the Hubble telescope. Hubble has one camera where it has more detail, and uh, so instead of filling this whole uh, box in here, all this information has been compressed into this slice. So this is a Hubble telescope picture, um, I believe, and then I gave credit to the European Southern Observatory. Um, I'll have to check on that. Another uh, elliptical here, giant elliptical galaxy. The ellipticals have kind of a smooth distribution of light across them, and there's some dwarf elliptical galaxies orbiting this uh, giant elliptical galaxy. The Andromeda is a spiral galaxy, a normal spiral galaxy, um, and I'll let you decide, um, but I'll ask you a question now. Do you think this is an SA, an SA? No, I would put it in, in between SB and SC. Uh, the nucleus is very small compared to the spiral arm structure. So uh, it's going to have uh, that designation of the small nucleus, the SC. And then there's some elliptical galaxies in orbit around the Andromeda galaxy. Um, definitely seeing the spiral galaxy here. I think this is the Whirlpool, M51. But don't quote me on that. But uh, seeing lots of gas, and especially the dust in the, uh, in the spiral arms. New star formation occurring you know, that makes these spiral arms bright. Um, here is a, a spiral galaxy viewed more edge on, but the presence of dust here tells us it's not an elliptical galaxy. Um, and here we get we have the uh, spiral structure and uh, things that rotate tend to form these flattened disks. Uh, so Jupiter with its satellites in the plane of its equator, Saturn's rings, um, the planets going around the sun from the uh, disk of gas and dust where the planets formed out of. But rotation tends to make this flat structure. And the spirals definitely do have rotation. The elliptical galaxies have stars in orbit around the center. So there is motion. They're not static. There is motion. But there isn't this organized one type of rotation, one direction of rotation for the ellipticals. Now the barred spirals, and again we get, instead of a simple spherical nucleus, we get a bar of material that goes through the nucleus. And this would be an SBC with the uh, very prominent uh, widely spaced spiral arms. And some other galaxies here that are further away, so the images are not quite as clear. But again, a barred spiral, you can see the rectangular shape going through the nucleus. Um, M83 with, uh, again, look at all these H2 regions. And in the H2 regions, we have hot young stars that are ionizing the hydrogen gas. And as the electron comes back to the proton and uh, recombines, it uh, falls towards the uh, nucleus through various energy levels. And in the visible range, one prominent transition the electron can make is to fall from level 3 down to level 2 towards the proton. And that emits red light. So this is uh, red light from hydrogen in these star-forming regions. Um, irregular galaxies, we still see H2 regions. There is gas and dust here. You can see dust blocking uh, the light in some uh, locations. 
but we don't have the organol, we don't have the spiral arms, we don't have an organization. This is the galaxy that, uh, an irregular galaxy that orbits the Milky Way galaxy, and, and in fact, the Milky Way is in process of absor absorbing, in, I don't remember the time in the future, but uh, hundreds of millions of years, this uh, material here will merge in with the Milky Way. Another view of different type of light is probably infrared light uh, that's uh, taking this photograph and showing more turbulence and less uh, spiral organization for the irregular galaxies. The Hubble telescope has been used to probe deep into the distant uh, parts of space. So we have the ultra deep field here. As you look carefully at this, uh, any place you see a point of light with crosshairs in it, that's a star. So there's one here, uh, there's a star here, point of light with uh, crosshairs, uh, there's a star up here, and there may be one more, but I'm not going to take time for looking at it. Everything else, where you do not see these crosses, these are galaxies. These are distant galaxies, and this might be the exposure where basically the uh, Hubble telescope was used for about 10 days worth of observing and all those images were stacked on top of each other to reveal uh, these dim objects, all these galaxies. And again, the more yellowish glow, these would be elliptical galaxies. Uh, you can see some spiral structure for some of the galaxies and flattened ones that are, uh, that are closer to us. But uh, I, b I believe that uh, the size, the area here, uh, next time you go to uh, a restaurant and you're given a straw, uh, look through that straw and see how much of the ceiling or wall you can view. This is be about equivalent of uh, looking at the sky through that straw and look at all the galaxies that are here. I have not taken time to count them, but uh, um, astronomers have not counted all the galaxies in the universe, but uh, from surveys like this, they can estimate, um, and they can count the number of galaxies in this, uh, this picture, and then uh, that area that the straw covers on the sky, multiply how many of those areas there are on the sky by the number of galaxies in this area, and you get an estimate of the number of galaxies in the universe. Well, in excess of 100 billion galaxies in the universe, and each of those with 100 billion or 200 billion stars. Here's another uh, uh, section of the sky that was imaged with the Hubble telescope, and again, this would be a star-type object. It's uh, a, a point of light uh, gives us characteristic uh, spikes at the uh, at the telescope. Um, and again, elliptical galaxies where the more yellowish color is uh, there, and uh, spiral galaxies with the the bluer color, and you can see some spiral arms on here as well. But you know, almost all of the the images here, the objects on this, are other galaxies way, way beyond the distance, uh, the size of our Milky Way galaxy. Uh, so the universe is an uh, amazing place worth exploring and we'll continue exploring in another video with this, with the types of galaxies and their distribution. As part of that distribution, we do need to know the distance to galaxies. I've mentioned this before in other videos, uh, but uh, in calculating how much energy is given off, we can measure the amount of energy that's received at Earth in our telescopes. If we know the distance to the object, then we can calculate how much energy is being emitted by that object, that galaxy or that star. But here, uh, applied to, to galaxies. Um, so also, it, we can measure the angular size of the galaxy on photographs made at the Earth, on the Earth-based telescopes or orbiting the Earth. We can measure that angular size. If we know the distance, we can calculate the true diameter of the object. We can know how big it is. Is it bigger than Milky Way? Is it smaller? That can be calculated if we know the distance. Then we can get some information on uh, where the mass is located. What's the distance of the mass from the center of the galaxy? Again, if we know the uh, uh, distance to that galaxy. So distance is very important to astronomers to understand our universe better. To find those distances we need standard candles and now when we talk about the universe in general we need standard candles that are brighter than Cepheid stars. 
The Cepheids, those are good for inside our galaxy and not too far away from our galaxy, but uh, we need brighter standard candles, and that's going to be provided by the Type 1a supernova um, in future, uh, future videos. We'll talk about that. But in general, the standard candle, something that we are pretty certain of its true energy output, of its luminosity. Again, at the telescope, we measure the apparent brightness of the object. That allows us to calculate the distance. So standard candles, keep that in your memory bank as uh, something that we'll be taking a look at. So again, write down some questions and uh, find an astronomer and ask those questions. That's all for this video.